we interrupt this program to bring you Courage the Cowardly Dog Show! For four seasons on Cartoon Network, Courage the Cowardly Dog either provided some dark, surreal humor for savvy kids, or scared the hell out of children everywhere, depending upon whom you ask. And while the show was pretty hilarious, featuring outstanding writing and character design, its dark and horror elements provided plenty of clean, burning nightmare fuel for the more impressionable members of its audience. Despite being a total coward, Courage always managed to save the day, and usually keep his owners, Muriel and Eustace, in the dark about whatever horrifying danger has been averted. While some of the characters he encountered were just misunderstood, some were actually pretty malicious, and nearly all of them were creepy as hell. So today, we're going over 10 of the most what the fuck characters in Courage the Cowardly Dog. The Magic Tree of Nowhere Appearing only in the Season 1 episode of the same title, the Magic Tree of Nowhere grows from a seed that Courage plants in the backyard, much to the annoyance of Eustace, who can't seem to grow anything. I've never grown anything! Not even weeds! But that stupid dog can grow trees! <laughs> when it turns out that the tree can magically grant wishes, gifting Muriel with an oven and Courage with an actual bulldozer, Eustace grows even more resentful, eventually chopping down the tree but not before we see it speak. Although the tree is a helpful, benevolent figure, its appearance, when speaking, scares the crap out of Courage, and 90% of kids watching this probably had the same reaction. It's a pretty weird mix of traditional animation, eyes that appear to be computer-generated, and an actual live-action human mouth. Even the tree's kind voice and wise words do nothing but to offset your brain's natural resistance to this bizarre combination of elements. Uh, it, it just looks wrong. Fortunately, the episode ends with the tree chopped down and Muriel's giant, misshapen head returned to normal size. Benton Tarantella Another first season episode, Everyone Wants to Direct, featured the first appearance of Benton Tarantella, who, as you may be able to guess, is a play on famous film director Quentin Tarantino. And yes, Benton is also a director and seems to have a genuine passion for his craft. Even if he is an undead zombie serial killer who, along with his partner Errol von Volkheim, murdered 12 freaking people when they were still living. Standard kids cartoon stuff. In that first appearance, Tarantella ponies up a large chunk of money to shoot his new film at the Bag Farmhouse. Of course, his actual intentions are to resurrect von Volkheim, who was buried under the property, and then eat Muriel. When Courage discovers that the film's script is actually a guide to the undead resurrection ritual, he's able to avert disaster by changing the script. The two zombies end up buried under the farmhouse once again, with Eustace and Muriel typically unaware that they were moments away from becoming zombie chow. Courage, isn't this exciting? Benton Tarantella had a pretty grotesque appearance, sure but it's his backstory that earns him a spot on our list. If you can think of another cartoon villain that seems to draw equal inspiration from Silence of the Lambs and Night of the Living Dead, we'd love to hear about it. The Clutching Foot Courage, the show, not the character, was also unafraid to brush up against Cronenberg-style body horror from time to time. And in an episode of the first season, The Clutching Foot, introduces a character of the same name which astonishingly combines gross out horror with Looney Tune style comedic antics. Looks like you've got a fungus. Don't worry, Eustace. I know some family remedies. Starting as a fungus on Eustace's foot, the clutching foot is formed when the fungus takes over his whole body and becomes sentient, appearing as a giant fungus encrusted left foot with heads for toes. The Big Toe, obviously the boss, speaks in a manner similar to a stereotypical mafioso from a Bugs Bunny cartoon. Courage is finally able to vanquish the fungus by, wait for it. There's only one cure for that. Dog spit. <laughs> Furiously looking at it for several agonizing moments until it releases Eustace. The Clutching Foot made another appearance near the end of the series in the fourth season's episode 11, Ball of Revenge, which featured some of Courage's worst enemies theming up. 
Mattress Demon. Things go wrong pretty quickly in the fourth episode of the series, The Demon in the Mattress, when Muriel buys a mattress over the phone from a person with a really creepy voice, who apparently already knows their address. Yeah, that's a bad sign. And sure enough, we then see the new mattress being delivered by the shadowy minions from the depths of hell. And of course, only Courage sees its horrifying demonic face. It only gets freakier from there, as we see a demon possess Muriel, allowing us to see some full-on crazy exorcist level demonic possession. Her appearance turns demonic, her head spins around and falls off, before speaking in a deep, male voice which we're sure scared children everywhere. And of course, Eustace just thinks that the mattress is giving Muriel nightmares. But Courage manages to find a solution the way many of us would, by looking up how to get rid of a demon on the internet. And he actually manages to exercise Muriel in a pretty funny way. Ha! But the demon strikes back, possessing Eustace instead. Nothing a little whack on the head with a rolling pin can't fix. The episode ends with Muriel and Courage returning the mattress, with Eustace, still possessed, rolled up inside. The fetus from Perfect. Now, if we're making a list of things that you're least likely to see in a children's television program, fetuses may very well be at the top of that list. We'll let you judge for yourself whether the apparition that appears in Perfect, the final episode of the series, qualifies. In the episode, a ghostly school marm appears to Courage and attempts to train him to be perfect in every way, from speaking to walking and even sleeping. This of course gives Courage a high level of anxiety, which manifests itself in this nightmare sequence as he's trying to get a perfect night's sleep. We're not sure where this misshapen CGI creation came from, or why it features in Courage's Nightmare, but it is now going to be featuring in our nightmares on a regular basis. Its solemn, creepy face and undeniable fetal features raises about a million questions we're not sure we really want answered. At any rate, Courage is finally able to accept his imperfections resulting in the school marm melting like the Wicked Witch of the West in a sequence that is also pretty damn disturbing. Violin Girl In the Season 2 episode Courage in the Big Stinkin' City, Muriel wins a sitar playing contest and is invited to perform at Radio City's Music Hall. Of course, they are met at the hotel by a giant creepy insect named Schwick and their first clue that something is wrong should be the fact that Muriel's rehearsal space is outfitted with shackles and littered with human body parts. Schwick sends Courage to a creepy old apartment building to retrieve a package, and horrors await behind every door. The first two doors revealing live-action footage of King Ghidorah and a shark, respectively. But behind the third door, a little girl sits facing away from Courage, playing the violin and Courage breathes a sigh of relief, until she turns around. Well, we probably all knew that was coming, but that claymation-looking monstrosity probably traumatized hundreds of children, even those who knew what to expect from this show. In a series full of moments like this, the brief appearance of the violin girl is widely considered to be among the scariest moments that it had to offer. Spirit of the Harvest Moon The first season episode, The House of Discontent, begins with Courage, Eustace, and Muriel trying to grow a lifeless, wilting flower while Muriel reads a prayer about the Harvest Moon. The episode's villain begins making itself known as a disembodied, supremely creepy voice which grows louder and angrier, until finally manifesting as a floating white live-action head, the spirit of the Harvest Moon, one of the most terrifying villains in the entire series. Continuing to speak in a voice from your worst nightmares, the spirit commands them to grow something before midnight, or be forced to leave the farm. Because you don't 
respect your land, you must leave it. And when they fail to grow anything or leave, the spirit begins to raise the heat, at which point, objects begin to melt, thermometers explode, and it looks like Eustace and Muriel are done for. Well, it's a good thing that Courage thinks fast, using the sweat of Eustace to water the wilting flower and make it grow, satisfying the spirit. King Ramses. The segment King Ramses' Curse appeared in the same half hour as The Clutching Foot, making that season one episode one of the most disturbing of the show's entire run. The segment opens with a pair of burglars stashing a stone tablet, stolen from the tomb of King Ramses, the Egyptian pharaoh. This immediately invokes the wrath of Ramses' ghosts, who send swarms of locusts to eat them alive. Once the tablet is discovered and found to be worth a million dollars, Eustace decides to sell it, which predictably does not make Ramses happy. The ghost brings three plagues, which Courage manages to defeat one by one. Courage, did you leave the tub running? But Eustace can't resist taunting the ghosts once all three plagues have been used up. Unfortunately for him, this doesn't seem to matter, as the episode ends with a swarm of locusts returning to devour Eustace. One of many times during the show's run that either Eustace or Muriel, or in some cases both, appear to have died at the episode's end. An incredibly creepy villain with godlike powers and no mercy whatsoever, King Ramses helped to establish the tone for the series early, and is still considered to be among the most truly frightening characters the show has ever produced. Fred. Another season one episode, Freaky Fred introduces Muriel and Eustace's nephew, who takes his occupation as a barber very, very seriously. In fact, Fred is obviously mentally ill and is completely obsessed with shaving anyone and everyone, but in this episode, especially Courage. Now, this may not sound like the creepiest character this series has ever had to offer, until you get a good look at him. His mannerisms by design invoke the image of a child predator. The way he talks, moves, acts, and even stares brings up mental images of history's worst lunatics that ever drive an ice cream truck. A popular theory circulating the internet suggests that Fred is actually a pedophile. If that isn't disturbing enough, Fred's character design is quite simply some of the most bizarre and terrifying shit you're likely to see in children's programming. His manner of speaking mostly in prose with a Vincent Price-like delivery doesn't help either, especially with his long, drawn-out, repeated use of the word naughty. After admitting to Courage that his compulsion to shave people resulted in him being admitted to the home for freaky barbers, he manages to shave Courage all the way down except for his tail, before being carted back off to the funny farm in a straight jacket. The entire time, that sinister, creepy grin never leaves his face, leaving us to wonder just how many children grew into long-haired, unshaven adults after being subjected to this insanity. Clyde the Fog Spirit Finally, we have this looking thing that appeared in the 2014 computer animated special The Fog of Courage, which only aired on Southeast Asia Cartoon Network, and has never gotten a full airing here in the United States. In it, Courage finds an amulet that causes a fog to descend on the farm, a fog that contains a vengeful spirit that wants to return the amulet to the grave of its long-lost love. When it appears, the spirit, voiced by series creator John Dilworth, speaks in a supremely spooky gibberish while engulfing the farm in a fog and apparently eating Eustace's car. It's a great Courage moment that somehow remains true to the series slapstick spirit while giving us a monster that would feel right at home in an actual horror movie. The full Fog of Courage short can be found online, and in July 2016, a Facebook campaign was launched to convince Cartoon Network to bring the series back for a fifth season. And while there is no official news yet, we remain hopeful that Courage the Cowardly Dog might return to give us more belly laughs while simultaneously scaring the shit out of us.